In order to deploy the autopulse quickly, and with the least interruption and compressions, a pit crew model, similar to that which is used in auto racing, is suggested for the responsibilities and positions of the staff members involved in using the autopulse and a defibrillator. Since the introduction of the autopulse, it has become clear that those organizations that have been most successful in using it have a very detailed deployment plans to which they consistently train, follow, and monitor. The pit crew method represents an efficient method of utilizing all available resources. In addition, it helps to minimize pauses, keeping no flow time to a minimum. Each institution should determine how this model can be integrated into the typical roles performed by members of the resuscitation team. Practice as a team using this model will help streamline actions and ensure rapid and efficient deployment. The following is a hospital-specific pit crew type of deployment based on the protocol demonstrated earlier in the basic deployment section. In order to minimize no flow time, manual chest compressions should always be done in the absence of the autopulse and or while the device is being prepared for operation. In the pit crew scenario, staff member number one manages the defibrillator. He or she brings it into the room and places it at the side of the patient, turns it on, applies the defibrillation pads, and operates the defibrillator. He or she also sits the patient up, helps remove the gown, places the patient on the board, and helps place the life band on the patient's chest. Staff member number two manages the autopulse. He or she brings the autopulse into the room, removes it from the transporter, turns it on, assures its readiness for operation, positions it at the head or side of the patient, slides it under the patient, and then operates it. Staff member number three simply helps sit the patient up and places him or her on the autopulse and helps remove the gown. As for positions relative to the patient, number one stands to the right of the supine patient along with the defibrillator to his or her right. Number two stands to the left of the patient along with the autopulse, which is to his or her right. Number three is also to the left of the patient and to the left of number two. Let's take a look at the process step by step. Staff member number two prepares the autopulse for use. He or she brings the autopulse in and places it on the left side of the patient and to the right of him or herself. Removes the autopulse from the transporter and lays it flat. Presses the on off button at the top of the platform to power up the autopulse and places the platform at the head or left side of the patient with the life band open and out to the sides so that the platform is ready to quickly slide under the patient. Staff member number one prepares the defibrillator for use. He or she places the defibrillator to the right of the patient and to the right of him or herself. Turns the defibrillator on. Sits the patient up or log rolls to the side in conjunction with number three and removes the patient gown from the back and applies the posterior defibrillator pad if anterior posterior placement. While the patient is still in the sitting position, number two slides the autopulse into position underneath the patient. Number one and number three then lay the patient back onto the platform and remove the gown from the front. They position the patient so that he or she is centered laterally from left to right and his or her armpits are aligned on the yellow guideline. Number three then resumes manual compressions. Number one operates the defibrillator. He or she places the anterior defibrillator pad on the patient's chest, or both apex and sternum pads if anterior-anterior placement. Orients the defibrillator cable to the foot of the bed so that it will not interfere with the application of the life band. The life band is then closed around the patient's chest. Staff member number one places band number one on top of the patient's chest. Staff member number two guides the mating slot of band number two over the yellow tab of band number one. Staff member number two presses both sides of the bands together to engage and secure the Velcro fastener. Staff member number two lifts the secured life band assembly all the way up, ensuring that the bands are at a 90 degree angle to the platform, that they are not twisted, and that there are no obstructions. And staff member number two then places the life band on the patient's chest, ensuring that the yellow alignment tab is placed over the position on the sternum where clinicians' hands would be placed for manual CPR. If the hospital's protocol is to shock first, then a quick rhythm check is performed and a shock is delivered if indicated. 
If the protocol is CPR first, number two presses the green continue button. The autopulse sizes the patient's chest and determines the force necessary to compress the chest the prescribed amount. All staff members are careful not to touch the life band while the autopulse is analyzing. Upon the visual cue on the screen, number two verifies the patient is properly aligned. To begin compressions immediately, staff member number two then presses the green start button again. Now let's look at this process in its entirety. Check hands. Once again, please remember that the keys to successful autopulse use are early, rapid deployment, and minimal pausing or no flow time. The autopulse can't work miracles. However, when used as instructed in this video, it will help you to improve blood flow in your cardiac arrest patients, thus giving them a better chance of returning to normal, productive lives.